Good morning, everyone. Really? That's all I hear? Let's try this one more time. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. I love your energy. So my name is Lonnie Payne Clark, and I am a longtime survivor of AIDS. In 1981, the first cases of HIV AIDS were reported by the CDC in the United States. Ten years later, this grove in which we gather was created, a 10-acre space that is now known as the National AIDS Memorial. Together, we join today in reflection upon both of these milestones. I can't help but think about what life looked like for me 41 years ago. In 41 years ago, my life partner, Joel Swineby, and I moved from Chicago. The next year, my identical twin, Lawrence, and his partner, Timothy Bollinger, moved from Chicago as well. We were all very much aware by the mid-1980s of a very insidious disease that was impacting our community with our friends. That illness was, of course, HIV and AIDS. Back in those dark days, uh, we decided to go as a family to the health center in the Castro and to get to be tested for HIV. Like so many of you here will understand, we received information that was devastating. We all found out that we were HIV positive during that visit. So my first four years was very interesting because we were using that time to look for knowledge. We were watching, we were taking care of, and ultimately grieving the loss of many of our friends, our family, and our family members. This decade was also personally devastating for me because of two reasons. The first reason was we all developed opportunistic infections and diseases those AIDS-defining diseases led to the deaths of Lawrence, Tim, and Joel by 1996. The second reason was that I was told that I would be dead by the end of 1996. Let's do some math. That was 1996. We're tw <laughs> Look at where we are today. This grove was vital to me during those dark moments. There were many times when I was coping with my own illness, the loss of others, that I found myself drawn to this remarkable natural space. And boy, just looking at it today with the quilt panels and all of the trees, it's just, it's just lovely. I mean, this is, this is life in this grove. Um, back then, even, um, this place was a remarkable place of solace. Um, I'm confident that there are those of he you here today who also remember some of those times and probably used this grove for the very same reason that I did. What has sustained me over the following years has been my sense of purpose. That purpose was to continue to help others. In the mid-90s when my brother his partner and my life partner were in their final days. My purpose was to provide comfort to them. With so much loss during that time, during the 90s, I could have said, OK, it's over. I'm ready to die. I mean, I've lost my family. My friends are dying. Why the heck am I still around? But you know what happened? Protease inhibitors. Protease inhibitors. I was around when they started working. You know, I, I, heard, um, I heard Billy Porter the other day, and this I'm going off of my little speech for a moment. I heard Billy to, uh, Porter talking about, um, in 1996, uh, the antiretrovirals started, 
But that was such a lie because a lot of us were doing antiretrovirals in the 80s. We were taking any drug we could get our hand on because we wanted to stay alive. So I just want to be sure that everyone's clear. Some of you youngsters, you know, you hear the horror stories about some of the antiretrovirals. I'm living proof that they work. So, um, and that's no shade to Billy Porter. <laughs> you know, that's no shade to Billy Porter. Um, but what that did was my health started improving. <laughs> Eric Chisul, I just saw you laugh. <laughs> yeah, I just saw you laugh. Um, I realized that I had a new purpose, and that purpose was to continue to help others. I did that by volunteering um, with the HIV AIDS hotline, talking with people who were newly diagnosed or who were afraid that they might become infected. My purpose was to remind them that AIDS was not a death sentence. My purpose was to help them find ways not to become infected. My purpose was to tell them that you could enjoy your sexuality without becoming infected and without infecting others. My purpose was to remind them that they were loved. I choose to live my life to the fullest to honor those whose lives that were cut short by AIDS. As a 35-year survivor of AIDS, I am now witnessing what it is like to be a senior citizen. <laughs> really? I'm getting the laugh on that one. I got it. Good. <laughs> the problems of the elderly are my new purpose. <laughs> Cancer, dementia, frailties that we all witness due to AIDS are now the frailties of growing old. What is my purpose now, you might ask? It is to continue to grow old with dignity. It is to, thank you. It is to accept the steadfast love and support of my family, the Swanbees. Joel's parents, Julius and Ethel Swanby, accepted me fully into their life four and a half decades ago. Joel's brother Mark, his wife Tony, and my niece Melanie are here in the, groove, in the Grove today. And I want you guys to stand. I know where you are. Come on. There you go. And of course, Orion, I see you. My grandnephew is there. Hey, Orion. Um, so, I have this amazing family, and not only is this family amazing, um, after Joel died, and I met my husband, Bruce, who's also over there, they accepted him into our family as well. So, even though I say my name is Lonnie Payne Clark, my name's really Lonnie Payne Clark Swan to be. <laughs> I acknowledge the joy all around me. I provide light and unconditional love to my friends and the people I encounter. Not darkness, not despair. I continue to share my light to tell the stories of Joel, Lawrence, and Tim, and the stories of others impacted by this horrendous disease. Simply put, I live. I I am a long-time survivor of AIDS. Thank you.